last day uh, we have talked about what is machine learning and what is the difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning also we have talked about why how linear algebra is important in machine learning in how in modeling data we also understood how to define like supervised learning is all about defining and modeling relationship between variables so what is the mathematics behind it and we have also uh, discussed about the difference between regression and classification so this is where we ended that in supervised learning the goal is to find that f hat that relationship that models a function that models the relationship between x curl and y so today we, our goal is to discuss the following number 1 so we have x curl the data and y and for this we have x curl 1 x curl 2 this is the features we have discussed this is the vector last day and this is the response why so we have the features we have the response variable and these are the realizations that we have observed that's the end data which are the realizations and this is the response variable so together you can write this as x curl 1 comma y1 x curl 2 comma y2 dot dot x curl n comma yn so this is the data we have this is what we is defined as data what is the goal for supervised learning for supervised learning we have already discussed it last day for supervised learning the goal is to so this y1 this y rather i should say is some function of this x curl this is assumed of course the data doesn't show that data shows that it is a mapping so we have to find like the data doesn't show the full bloom of the function so for example if you have weight and height you will get data like this so it is not a function it's like a mapping right you're getting the data as a map not a function so your goal is to find the closest best possible function to this you know closest possible function so this is your f this is your f the red line now the question is that how did we approach this last day we have discussed this f for solving the problem we make it an easier problem how do we make it an easier problem we specify some distribute some not distribution but some functional form of the fun you know of the function of the relationship we assume that they the relationship is of a specific functional form for example we can assume that f is equal to a plus bx also we can assume that f is equal to p plus qx plus rx square there can many many other format you can assume f can be equal to 
uh, m e to the power n x. Many different forms are possible. So we have this data, and the supervised learning is the goal is to find the best possible f, which is defined as f hat. Now there is a question. The question is that what do we exactly mean by this best possible? So this is how it's done. I'm repeating once again. We have data. Data means x curl 1, y1, one, x curl 2, y2, dot dot dot, x curl n, y n. We assume us the goal is to find, remember the goal is to find f hat which approximately models the relationship between this now what do we do we need to find that but we assume a model or an algorithm let's call it an algorithm also we can call it as model Why is this distinction between model and algorithm? I will uh, talk about it later on. And we assume, like, we have some assumptions. Okay. Assumptions, what are the assumptions? The assumptions are here. One assumption I've already talked about is this. This is the assumptions, so functional form. The assumptions. So we assume certain things. Why? Why do we assume that? We assume that because this problem is not solvable so easily. So we make it into an easier problem. The goal is to make it into an easier problem. Okay. Now what's next? So we want what? Remember the goal was to find. I already drawn it. Let me copy that. The goal was to find this best possible thing out there. Okay. This is our goal. Remember that our goal is to find this best possible thing. So next is we assume the model and then in that we find the best possible model. Okay. Imagine like I, I, I talk about it in a very interesting like let me give an interesting example and i like this because it's exactly how it's done let's say you want to find the best student in a school or a college okay so what you do is that to find the best student you can go into section a you can go into section b you can go into section c so and find individually the best students here And then you find the best among these three. How about that? That is a good idea, right? So instead of, because find, there are lots of students out there, right? In the total school. So 
it breaks down into simple this is called simplifying it simplifies into a simpler problem into finding the best rent in a smaller section an easier problem right and then it moves ahead to finding the best among the others but the goal here is that it cannot solve this in this problem this general problem so what it does is that it may it assumes sorry it assumes that it is just give me a minute let me just again share the screen it assumes us in a simpler assumption and then find the best model inside that okay and in this way they can find multiple models it's exactly how it proceeds now the question is that how to find the best model what do we define by you know what do we mean exactly by the best model that's exactly what we're going to do next any doubts out here guys all of you understood yes or no what about others you can give a thumbs up anev avas chandan raj saurav shukanya and tushar see i will tell you something it's very important to have a by communication like both way communication otherwise there is no sense of you attending the class or me taking the class right if there is no way both way connection uh, anyway it's online and we are not seeing each other so if you are understanding this you should say yes if no you should ask your doubt otherwise there is no sense in attending the classes right yeah thank you uh, so please keep this in mind okay while you are doing this this is very important and very strict about it and I, I i respect those people who do do that and i do not respect the people who do not do that okay the next aspect is this that how to find the best model after an assumption remember there is an assumption before assumption i have said that fx is of the form a plus bx i am i am saying i am doing this purposefully very slow because the reason is that people are new here okay so what do we mean by exactly by the best model this is where things get tricky this is where things get really really tricky what is the goal of a supervised learning model the goal is this that This data is here. Now the goal is if I give a new height, let's say this a new height. i'm repeating the goal once again if i give a new height will the prediction be close to the actual value i'm repeating once again if i give you a new height let's a prediction comes out to be this one and the actual let's say weight is this one the question is that will it be close how close it will be So now you may you may ask that how do we actually know what is like you know what is the actual value we don't know right it's a future point so therefore that's why 
uncertainty comes up. And that's exactly, you have to understand that you have to have a philosophical mindset change. You have a new data, you will have a prediction based on that. So let's say you find the model f at x. And you have a, you bought it, buy in a new data, let's say x, x new. And you get the output f hat of x new. Now, why new you don't know? You don't know. But you want that it should be close to y new, whatever the y new is. Do you understand? You have a x new. The goal is that the goal is this, right? If I give you a new value, the prediction should be close to the actual value. This is the goal. That's the whole, that's the whole point. I mean, there is no point that if I give you and you have already have a data point that is you know the value, they should give close to that. That is not the point of supervised learning. The whole point of prediction is that if I or the whole point of teaching of this course is that you understand the fundamentals and if you are given a new problem in the industry, you will be able to tackle that problem. But you don't know what that problem is. You don't know the solution is. So how do you make sure that for this data, for the given data, you fit a model so well that the new, the new data, the for the new x new, the new feature, you predict really close, but you don't know the y new, the the response variable. But you have to make sure it it is the case. Do you understand all of you the philosophy? This is the very important philosophy, and this is where people get confused, and this is exactly where the whole difference between statistics and machine learning lies or the similarity between statistics and machine learning lies. Okay. This is very important. Did you understand? Please say yes or no. If no, please ask me your doubt. I would love to answer your doubt. Okay. I'm repeating once again. If I give the whole point of prediction, the whole point of supervised learning is this, a goodness of a model is in, measured by the fact that if I give you a new data point, a new set of features, will that predicted, the, the response variable that you have predicted from that feature is close to the actual response or not? Without knowing the actual response, you will not know the actual response, but you need to be as sure as possible. That's why while teaching this machine learning, always the supervised learning, you always take the example of teaching and learning because it, this is exactly how it, it works. You're, there you're making a machine learn while we are teaching you, your minds is learning the knowledge I'm sharing. Your minds are learning the knowledge I'm sharing. Essentially, your mind is the machine now. So it, it exactly works the same way. So this is the basic idea. Now, the question is that how do we mathematically represent it? And that's exactly where the difference lies. You may, you may seem this kind of approach. You may seem this kind of approach there. And I will show you the approach that you have seen probably. And I will go back and connect it to what actually the truth is. So you have data. You have an algorithm and you have to find the best model, best algorithm or best model of the algorithm. Algorithm is based up of a lot of models out there. Among those, like for example, if I assume that fx is equal to a plus bx, this 1 plus 2x is a model. 3 plus 5x is a model. So among this, we find the best model. Let's say we find like all the possible values of y and a and b gives a different model. Now the question is, how do we find the best model? Okay, this is exactly what is done. And this is exactly how it's done. But the philosophy is different. The best model is selected in the following manner. Okay, so you... The first thing it should be that that the this data set should be very so let's focus on first thing first that before 
focusing on the future, what it will do to the future data, does it fit well to this present data? This is first thing first. So instead of focusing on the future, we will now focus on the present data, right? And then we will go into the future or past data. This is the present and past data, okay? And then we will focus on the future data. There are two aspects, remember that. Now let me focus on the present data. We, the, does it does it fit well to the present data? The present height and data, data we have right now here, does it fit well to that? That is the first case. So we will just check whether it's fit well to past and present data that we have. And then we will focus to the future data. Okay, makes sense. So how do we make sure that it does well for the present data, first data? The idea is that we want for this present data that you're looking out here. It should be as close as possible. So it should be optimum. So the idea is that for each XI here, based on the model, you have an output. For every X curl I that you have seen, it has a actual response. It is a predicted response. That is F of X curl of I. In this case, it will be A plus BX1. Okay. For X curl 2, it will be f of x curl 2, but actually you know the value of y2, which is a plus b x2. So this is the predicted part. So the goal is the actual value, the yi's, should be close to the, this is the, so for, let's say this is x1. This point is for this red line, for this specific a and b, this red line is nothing but f of x1. But actual value is this, y1. So your goal should be that this should be as close as possible. Like, for example, the red line should not be here. And it should not just happen for one single data point. It should happen for every single data point. So how do we define that? So we define something called a loss function. That is, we define that it should be close to as close as possible. So if I want to say, so what do we do? We do it simple way. Let's let's go to the n dimension. So we have this predicted values. That is, f one of x curl, f of f of x curl two dot dot f of x n data points. The predicted vector of points. This is actual. That is y one y2 dot, 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 yn and we want that each one of them should be close together or we can also want that this vector should be actually close together to this vector this ve this two set of num these two vectors should be as close as possible probably individually they will not be as close but together they will be as close so in other words the distance between these two vectors let's call it p and this call is a p vector a vector should be minimum, right? How do you define the dif difference between two vectors? One way is that to the Euclidean distance. So summation of xi minus yi whole square. Remember that formula from coordinate geometry? So f of x curl i minus yi whole square i from 1 to n. So this becomes a loss function. So this becomes the loss function. But remember, this loss function is designed in such a way that it only works well on present data, not on the future data. Why is this true? Let me give you an example. Let's say you have data points like this. Okay. And you build a function. Let's you assume, let's say this is x y variable, this is x variable. And you build a function ax square plus bx ax plus sorry. A plus bx bx plus cx square plus dx cube 
plus e. This is the function you take. Let's say, yeah, let's say, let's say this function, let's remove one data set. Now, if you take this specific form of the function, what will happen? If you take this specific form and do the sum, let's say yi minus f of x curl i or xi whole square, we want it to be as minimum as possible. So what the function does? The function finds those a and b in such a way that it goes through each of these points individually. It's five degree function. So this is made minimum. So understand that, but you know that probably the future data for this point, let's say for this point, it will be this, let's say, but it's so far away. You see the distance. So it's actually not minimizing for the future data point. This methodology is minimizing for the current and present data point. Okay. But that is a good first step to start. You don't minimize for the future data point. You minimize for the current data point. At least that's the first step. But that is where the next part will come. We'll discuss about it later on in the later classes about something called overfitting. But did you understand the difference that the goal is actually to predict for the future data point? But this loss function that we have defined here is actually, we have to minimize that. But minimizing that we will only give a good approximate, a good function that approximates the current or the past data point that we have. Is it clear, guys? Yes or no? If not, please ask your doubt. Yeah, Tushar. You have a doubt? Please unmute yourself if you want to talk. Okay, probably you don't have any doubt. Any other questions out there? Anif, Avas, Chandan, Rajeshi, Rishita, Sharav, Sriranjini, Shubham, Shukanya, Tushar. In a specific reason to Euclidean distance is chosen. Yeah, there's a reason to choose Euclidean distance. Uh, number one. Okay, so what do we get? Let let uh, let me come back. Let me answer that question first. So we have data. I'm writing this over and over again because this is very important. This is the assumption part. You have to understand what's the true, what's not true. That's my duty. Okay, next part is to fix the best model. Best model. So there are two aspects to it. The best model for past or present data that we have, past data, best model for future data. Is it the best model of future data? Okay. Because the goal, this is the main goal. But this is a preliminary step to do. But we have seen. That so, how do we do this? We define a loss function to solve this problem. We define a loss function. The loss function is defined as summation of i from 1 to n. This is called the yi minus f of x curl of i whole square. So, um, Sai has asked that. We have taken the squared, but why uh, not some other distance? Because understand we have to minimize the loss. And minimizing the loss is nothing but that's exactly where calculus is needed to minimize the function. For example, this will turn out to be summation of i from 1 to n, yi minus a minus b of xi whole square. Okay, and understand that we have our goal is to find this a and b because we do not know that. That's why the unknown function comes up. So we minimize this with respect to a and b. So this is a function of a and b. This is a loss function which consists of variables a and b. So to minimize that, so minimizing that requires calculus. And if we take any other function, let's say modulus, 
if you take modulus, then it will not be differentiable. So we want this distance, this sum to be differentiable, number one. That's why you have taken square distance and square distance is easily in, in easily understandable. Is it is good? Let's assume. Also, it's convex. Okay, convex implies so two things. We need differentiable. We need to be sure that there is a global optimum. So that's why you see, that's why calculus becomes important that to ensure a global optimum, you know that for a convex one, there is a global optimum. And differentiable, you know that it should be differentiable. So based on this, because without the global optimum, you cannot minimize it, a global minimum. So this is very important to understand that therefore the square makes sure it's convex and differentiable both. Did I answer your question, Sang? The other, of course, the other distance function which are differentiable and convex, but this is the easiest one. Okay. Why vector distance you took not individual feature point distance? Because if you take just individual feature point distance, that will turn out to be summation 1 to n mod of yi minus f of xi, which is another good distance, but as I have told you, this doesn't follow this. Did I answer your question, Tushar? It's not differentiable. It's, it may have a, it's convex, but it doesn't, it, it's not differentiable. All of you did understand this? Yes or no? Yes, short of. You have a doubt? Ani, Avas, Chandan, Rajeshi, Sriranjini, Shubham, Tushar. Okay. Everything clear, guys? Yes or no? It's very important to. Okay. All of you understood? Yes or no? I just want an yes or no. If not, please ask your doubt. You have time. Ask your doubt. Simple. Good. Okay. Very good. Let's go to the next one. But before that, let me solve an example. And I will give this as a homework when the course starts. That if I assume that a model is a plus bx, so the loss function will be based on these two unknown parameters a and b. And the loss function is defined as summation 1 to n yi minus f of xi, which is turning out to be this whole square. Now, if you differentiate it, so we want to minimize it. So we want both of this partial derivatives to 0 because it is a global minimum. And the global minimum, this partial derivative is 0. No one else is 0 because it's a convex function. And after this, you get some equations out. For example, if you do the partial derivative, let me do the derivative of it for you. So this gives you summation of 1 to n. 2 comes out yi minus a minus b of xi and minus a derivative. We are using chain rule is equal to 0. And here this gives with respect to b. Again, minus 2, yi minus a minus b xi. But for b, there is an xi. So xi is equal to 0. So this turns out that there are two equations. Summation of yi is, is equal to 1 by n a plus b 1 by n summation of xi. This we get from this, and from this we get 1 by n summation of yi is equal to a 1 by n summation of xi plus b 1 by n summation of xi square. So now you have these two unknowns. This is a yi is a xi we already know. So we have two unknowns a and b. The rest are all known. These are all known. Because we know yi is, we know the data point. So we solve a and b in terms of, so you can just con consider this constants. Like you can consider this alpha, beta, gamma, delta, psi. 
and you solve this equation in terms of alpha beta gamma delta psi and then replace it and you will find the two a hat and b hat and this exactly is the best possible function linear function that fits this the present and current data this is exactly how the present and current data is solved now i hope all of you understood this linear thing yes or no this is a definition now understand as this changes as this function changes you can make it p plus q plus you can also make it i will give this homework that if you can make fx is equal to p plus qx plus rx square then instead of these variables it will be the loss function will be l of p comma q comma r you will have three equations three unknown three equation you can solve it right that's the best that's the part that's the whole part three equations three unknowns you can solve it in terms of uqr so you define a function using this method you can find any good function out there that fits the current data rather the past data okay this is how you define an algorithm assume data assume best model this is exactly how you find out and this is exactly how calculus is needed because to optimize it to optimize this to find the minimum that's why calculus is needed okay even for defining the loss function the calculus is needed so that it has a minimum and it's differentiable so that's why calculus is needed for machine learning but the question lies is so what what we have discussed till now what is what are left so we have discussed how to find the f hat as after as i mentioned we have discussed why calculus is important now the next part is that why on the earth do we need probability and statistics and that that will give you the idea this is something mind blowing because you have never heard this before because you know i i, I learned it while i you know, I, I kind of understood it within myself. I have never, never, never read it anywhere. Okay. So this is something important. You should pay attention to this very carefully. And you will understand probably today the difference between statistics or the similarity and exactly why they are the same. Okay. So let's go towards it. Remember, our past data thing is solved. And you can see that this can lead to a very specific feature of overfitting or something that doesn't for example in this example what exactly it means it means that it meant that this is a good function a good model that fits the past data but doesn't fit the future data well okay so just focusing on past data modeling will lead to a very weird problem that is called overfitting where it doesn't operate to any future data. It doesn't, it, the model doesn't work for any future data. Hence, the model goes bad. Hence, the model is not good. At. So somehow we have to make sure it doesn't happen. Right? Somehow we have to make sure that. And that exactly where probability and statistics and so many different ideas of training, test, all these things come up. And why they are similar, that is exactly what I'm going to discuss today. Okay, and I am so excited because it's the first time I'm teaching this to the students. So please stay focused. Okay. Great. Now, the whole point is whether how to make sure a model actually works well on future data so first of all understand you know that if it's sunny today after one hour that is in the future it will probably not start to rain and it will be a flood right but there's however a chance and this is exactly where probability comes in probability models the future based on the present or the past it helps you model that how does it model that by giving a distribution for example if now let's say its temperature is 20 degree 
Celsius. After one hour, it will probably be around 20 degrees Celsius, but it can go one degree up and down depending on whether the clouds or not. So that 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 behavior, that unknown behavior, can be represented as a probability distribution. So what we will do to model the future? To model the future, we will take help of probability. Because somehow we have to model it, right? Somehow we have to make sure that we can model the future so that we can at least understand its behavior. I mean, to understand whether it really fits well for the future data or not, we may have to make sure that there is some mathematical notion out there. And the mathematical notion is being provided by probability. The mathematical notion, the mathematical model of the future is probability, I should say. So mathematical model of future is probability. And it's the best possible thing that can happen because future is un not unpredictable, just like probability. All of you understood this philosophy? Yes or no? So this is the first starting point that we model the future using probability. Yes or no? Did you understand this? Great. Now what happens? Now what is the what what you what are exactly we are modeling here? I mean, what is that unknown thing that we're trying to model here? What is the unknown thing? Can anybody say? Does anybody have some idea? What is the unknown thing that we are trying to model here? I mean, what is the unknown? Data. Exactly, data. Perfect. So the unknown here is the data. Rather, what I am saying is that if I give x new, will you be able to predict y new? As close as possible, y new hat. We do not know y new, but we want to predict y new. So how is this? So we want the unknown here is the y new, rather not the y new. I should say it's y new given x new because you already know x new. That's why conditional probability comes up. Okay, so because we are using x new to find the y new. So this is already known. This is already unknown. And the unknown thing is modeled by probability. And that is exactly where random variables comes up and conditional distribution comes up. So therefore, we model this y new given x new. We assume, we may assume that this there is some distribution attached to it because we are modeling the unknown, some distribution. Without the assumption of the unknown, without a mathematical model of the unknown, we cannot do that. Or can we? Does it always need to have a distribution? So let me tell you a distributional aspect, a distributional format of simple linear regression. So we have now seen, so using this methodology, <laughs> like the XI and this methodology, we cannot extrapolate it to future data, right? Unknown data. What can we do for this? Yeah, it's uncertain quantification, exactly, Tushar. 
we are un, uh, trying to model the uncertainty and that's exactly where probability comes up that's the perfect word probability is a modeling of the uncertainty okay so let me show you an example without examples you will not be able to understand so so in this case we have assumed previously we have assumed that y is equal to like the functional form fx is equal to a plus bx so what we do is that we assume this y all the data point that is coming up given the feature follows let's say normal distribution where the mean value is this fx because we already know this and with this unknown sigma square which we don't like it may be known like it may not be known it doesn't matter so how does it help in future data see understand that what we are interested in that we do not want for all future data to be the best the best possible data what we want that it should work on average it should work the best so this is meant by on average it should work the best so the goal is to make sure the algorithm works best for future data on average because we cannot control every single data point out there otherwise we would become god or nature itself but what we may have control is that we may control the average the average behavior we cannot control what happens in our life every single day or hour but what we control we can control is that we can control the average why because if we saw it going on that direction in the bad direction i can move it towards the average to this direction okay let's say i go i i i am walking i am walking and i fall down this or suddenly a thing comes in you know in between my feet you know in my path and i fall down on the road now it is my control to pull it back that means we have the control to make the average make our make our life to a certain average we can control the average but we can't control the every single individual point does this make sense guys so that's why so we are going to control the average behavior of the algorithm on future data we will not be able to control every single data point and that's exactly where this probability distribution helps because for a probability distribution each individual data point we do not know about that whether it will work well or not but we can we know that the average have a very specific well defined single number okay and that's why that is our metric the average behavior because it is a well defined number okay remember this always this philosophy is very important you can connect it to life itself okay so this is the assumption now why does this help since we know this is a normal distribution we know that every future data point should follow this normal distribution that means we know that the average behavior is fixed the average i am repeating once again the average behavior is fixed for every single future data point am i am i making sense since we have modeled the uncertainty using this distribution each individual data point is uncertain for the future but we have defined it using probability so the average future behavior how the y will be looking on average given x in the future this is very well defined and since this is very well defined single mathematical expression we can use mathematics to understand the future distribution so let's let's understand so this is the yi so we know that yi is given xi's 
follow normal distribution a plus b x i comma sigma square this is the data point now understand the normal distribution is only helping just give me a minute the normal distribution assumption is only helping for future data point But this is the so this is the only use of bringing it in. Otherwise, there is no use of it. So that we can model the future. I'm repeating once again. This is very important to understand why probability where probability fits in the whole equation. It's for the future modeling the future. Okay. So, but the first question is that first step is past data. How does it work well on past data? Next step is the future data. We will do both of them. For past data, we do what? We have to define a loss function. Similar loss function. So what we do? We find a probabilistic loss function. And that is exactly what is called log likelihood. But in log likelihood, we increase the loss function. We increase it. So we will define minus of log likelihood. So for log likelihood, you should know what is log likelihood, okay? That is, we have assumed that in the course, you should know statistics. So, oh, oh I'm so sorry. I mistakenly pressed the button off. Yeah. So you, this is assumed that you should know what is log likelihood. Okay. So Tushar has a question. How to know? We know condition to follow. Yes. No. Understand, Tushar, this is a very good question. That... Our goal is to predict y based on x. We know the x, right? Given the x, we need to predict y, right? We could know the distribution of y, x. But that is an extra information. Why will we need extra information for a model, right? Why will we store extra information? We just need that given this, if we know this new feature, what will be the output? What will be the response variable? We want to know that. We are not interested in what is the distribution of y. We do not interested in what is the distribution of x. Or we don't. On, we are not interested in what is the distribution of x comma y, joint distribution. We just want to know that given this new value of x, what will be the new value of y? So that's where the uncertainty comes in y, not x. Rather, y given x. Am I making sense, Tushar and others? That's a very good question because this is yeah. Thank you. Great. So. Yeah, so we are minimizing the information that we need to feed into the model, feed into the model, because a lot of information out there, right? So in case of this probabilistic way, we want to find a loss function in terms of this, and we define log likelihood, negative of log likelihood. This is important because that's a loss function. Log likelihood, what is log likelihood? Log likelihood in simple terms explains, explains that or measures not negative log likelihood. Log likelihood in simple terms measures how much like the data is coherent with the actual distribution. So for which for which values of A and B, the data actually coherence with the actual normal distribution is coherence, you know, are similar. It measures that. So the maximum the log likelihood, the better the coherence. Negative is that we want to maximize log likelihood. So if you want to make it a loss function, which is we have to minimize, we minimize the negative of log likelihood. Okay. All of you understood. This is exactly what is called maximum likely estimate. Okay. So there's an interesting aspect here. So let me do it for you. Okay. And why this is interesting and why everything just falls into the place you will understand. So let's assume yi is equal to follows normal a plus bxi comma sigma square. So the, the distribution of it is this is some constant, let's some constant, which is nothing but 1 by root 2 pi sigma. Okay, I have to write it down. Okay, let's write it down. 1 by root 2 pi sigma e to the power minus half yi, sorry, this should be yi, okay, uh, 
no i'm sorry y minus a minus bxi sorry this should be yi yi is the observed value okay whole square by sigma square now log likelihood is defined as log of the joint distribution of the entire data set f of y1 y2 yn of y1 y2 yn dependent this gets multiplied and this gets summed up 1 to n log of f of yi this which turns out to be summation of 1 by n let's call this constant c c dash because log has come into minus half of this is exactly where it becomes interesting minus half of yi minus a minus b of xi whole square by sigma square and if you take minus of log loss function it becomes some constant c including this c dash and sigma square some constant c times this half goes away minus minus get cancelled because you have taken minus of log likelihood summation of this constant is a positive constant remember because half sigma square all are positive yi minus a minus bxi whole square so what it comes out it comes out that exactly this is now nothing but a positive constant times the basic loss function we have defined here this one this is so beautiful why this is beautiful the reason is that this tells you that this is actually minimizing the past data so after minimizing we get exactly the same we get exactly the same the same a hat and b hat but this is for the past data remember that so both these methods are different methods but they gives the exact same estimate the line for past data is it clear guys yes or no is it clear aditi anif chandan rajeshi sai shorov sranjini shukanya tushar any questions out there good so we have understood this is very important we have understood that for past data both this non probabilistic method and probabilistic method gives the same output right but here in this probabilistic method there is an extra advantage what is that extra advantage let's see the extra advantage is the future data as you already mentioned how how what we want for the future data we want the few for future data that this y given x should be close to f of x rather y minus f of x whole square given x should be minimum as minimum as possible should be as minimum as possible and this is exactly nothing but x sorry not this but expected value of this the expected value of this because we we are interested in the average value not the actual value okay remember that we want the expected value to be as minimum as possible right you want the expected value to as minimum as possible how do we make sure that any idea this is made sure do you know where this is minimized do you remember that why where expectation a minus a whole square is minimized it's minimized that for which a we want 
so we want that fx to be as good as such that this is minimized we want that fx to be as good as that here we have found the fx to be in such a way that here we have found our fx to be in such a way that it fits the past data but here we want this to be minimized and this is minimized you know when this is minimized expectation of a y minus a whole square for which a it is minimized this is the variable here this is the unknown here so this a is becomes expectation of y at that value so we want so for this to happen not the mean of y i uh, okay well, i don't know why do you whether you mean uh, y is a response variable or random variable i mean but wh what it means that we have to select a fx in such a way that expectation of all y given x should be that fx and that exactly is the case because in normal we assume y given x is equal to normal a plus bx this a plus bx is nothing but the fx right given sigma square no it's random variable do you understand i am repeating once again we want future data for future data we want expectation of y minus fx whole square given x to be minimum that will make sure the future data is safe and this is minimized at for the fx if fx is equal to expectation of y given x see this has never been explained to me so naturally by even my isi professors okay that because they just thought this needs to be minimized why this need to be minimized because this captures a notion of future data performance did you get it guys that's why probability is so powerful and this is minimized only if fx is the expression of y given x that's why you have to make sure whenever you are giving the distribution writing the distribution let's say some distribution of dot you have to make sure that expectation of y given x should be the function you want so this is where the fx should be and now you can assume certain functional form of fx that's your choice but this is where let's say you can assume to be this but whatever you do that fx should be expectation of y given x this fx shouldn't be expectation of square of y given x this should be expectation of y given x you may have asked why we are doing this because this is done and this is very important for linear models they all linear models is based on this this is very important so this fx this distribution is should be made in such a way so that the expectation is comes out to be this the functional form you want reducing expected square expected error square because as i've told you this is the future this is i, I if you are not present rajesh i don't know but the future can only be measured by this we have talked about why the future how the future is modeled by probability so we want this future y given x to be close to fx given x that means we want the y minus fx whole square given x should be close as possible and this is a random variable so we want its expectation to be as close as possible because we know that the data is coming the y given x is coming from some distribution we know that and that's why we turned out that the fx the functional form should be expectation of y given x and the, and then you can make your own functional form as you want by assumption but the idea the how to make the distribution what should be the distributional format the distributional format should be like this that whatever the distribution you take of y given x the expectation of that should be the fx that's the assumption only need to make sure that it works well for future data and that's exactly what is the case here so it actually is safe it works for the future data right all of you understood this yes or no this is very 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 important to understand why this is why probability probably doesn't need training and test data set so this is where the next part is coming what about others aditi andan rajesh shishorov sriranjini tushar any doubt 
if you cannot understand this, probably your probability and statistics needs to be brushed up. And that's why it becomes important to understand that what exactly is happening out here. Without that, you will not be able to understand, right? You see that the future is modeled by probability. Without understanding probability, you cannot actually understand that. There is no other way out. I'm sorry. Okay. So this is it. This is how exactly model for the future data, right? So do you think I, uh, so the next part of the discussion will be like, what if we cannot assign a probability distribution to a function, to such data and why training test and cross validation, all these things comes up to be important. Cross validation will not be discussed in this free classes. It will be discussed in the paid classes that will happen afterwards. But in the free class, I should at least discuss why training and test data is important. Do you think I should do this today or next day? I want to raise our fans. Like, if you want yes today, right today. If you want next day, you are right next day. Okay. So I have got one next three two days. Two next three next four two days. Five today's three next. I if there is another okay, already the two days won't because yeah, people are thinking that they are writing the same message twice will count twice. No, it will count only once. Okay. So there are nine people out here, five today's are already there. Shukanya, Chandan. Aditi, Anif, Sridhan, uh, Rajeshi, Shukanya, Aditi, Anif, Sridhan, Rajeshi, Rajeshi, Anif, Aditi, Chandan, Shukanya. Okay, five. Yeah. So I will do it today. You can see the recording if you cannot get in and get to understand this. Yeah. So this is the last free trial class, and this is very important to understand. Okay. So the question is this: that what to do if we do not know the distribution? Because this assumption may not hold. Not even just normal. If you just put in another distribution, it may not hold. This assumption may not hold. Then what to do? Like how to measure this expectation? And this is exactly the reason why training and test split came up. This is exactly the reason. Understand this diagram very well. Just give me a minute. Okay. Understand this, that you have a population. Okay. The population of the whole data set is out there that you don't know. So what you're taking, you're taking a sub part of the data set the sample okay now understand if you have a distributional knowledge you know the how the data is generated okay for example in normal case you know how data is generated for example in if you know that it's generated by normal you can generate you can simulate normal data right for new data to test whether it will work good or not. But what if you don't know the data generation process? What you just collect a uh, say a collection of data. You do not know how it's generated. In case of normal, you know that the y given x follows normal or any other function, the distribution. 
So you can using that you can generate and simulate new data. But when you collect data and you do not know how this is generated, and you do not know the assumption, which is 99.9% cases, then how will you get new data to test it, to understand whether it works well or not? And that exactly is the reason why the data is set is divided into two halves. So there's a population where the y given x are given. You know, you know the actual y given x's, the distribution or the actual, all the values out there. But out of that, you're taking a small sample that which you are calling data. X curl one, y one, dot dot dot, x curl n, y n. But if you know the distribution, so this is somehow generated. So if this is normal, you know that this follows normal. But what if not normal? What if not normal? How do you find that expect? How do you ex approximate that expected behavior? This one. We want a value of that. How do you find that value? That exactly why the train and test data is split. So in those cases, there is population, there is data, and this data is divided into two halves. In data generation process, you already know that it will follow normal. So you already know the behavior, you already made sure it works well for the future data. But here, since you do not know, what you do is that you keep aside another data set, a random data set. So 80% is kept here, 20% is kept here. So you understand this data set. So it's assumed in this case that the only information that you know is of this data set. So this is the supreme here. Because this, like, this is like the closest possible approximation to the population. That's exactly what we know. Okay, so we have to assume that it works well in the data. Now we are randomly picking 80%, randomly picking 20%. So since you're randomly picking 20%, the distribution of this, since it's random, if let's say you have a big bowl of 180, sorry, 80 red balls and 20 blue balls, and you randomly pick up 10 of them, the chance, the expected chance, like the distribution of those 80, 20 red ball will be reflected in this randomly taken population, the sample, right? Similarly, the behavior, the distribution of this data set is reflected both in this training and test, right? Now, this training is considered as past data. Based on this past data, the model is found out. And this test data is nothing but telling you the future performance, the expected future performance. How it will happen. In this case, what will be the case? In this case, you can show that expected future performance you can prove actually. You can find out this value. Like y minus fx given x, you can prove that whole square um wait. Yes. I mean you can know from this that it will be minimum. You can find it value out. What will be the expected value? Right? From this only. In terms of you know, in terms of x, you will know what will be the expected value, right? Similarly, here you can know it from the performance of the test data set. Now, how do you define the performance of a model? That is a different question. I mean, we in case of this regression, we want it to be as close as possible. That is the performance. For classification, it will be different. That will be taught in the course. But the estimate, we can get it here. Like now, why the estimate is needed? Because now you're comparing two models. 
let's say a plus bx and p plus q plus rx qx plus rx you will only look at this future performance right which one ever is lower the best best performance that one you will take so this future performance is needed for measuring the performance that's the whole idea okay for measuring which is better did you understand guys that's why training and testing is it's nothing but a proxy to the randomness and the randomness is done and incorporated by this random like the unknown is done and incorporated by again this random structure out here because it's the uniform distribution did you understand that this is exactly the difference between machine learning and statistics in statistics and probability there is a normal assumption and the automatic that's, that's actually helping you find the future performance but in this case in this training test it's not helping you find the future performance directly by because we don't know that how the data is generated so hence we assume the data is generated from the sample this is the best possible assumption and we divide into two sets and then we train on the you know we past data set is the training data set and we consider this future data set as this test data set and we get an approximation to that future data set, future performance by testing how it performs in the test data set and then use that to compare and select the best model out there okay this is the reason why training and test is important and this is something that is never told anywhere i have never seen anywhere told that's why i thought i should tell you this in this class Okay, there's some questions. So test dataset is pseudo unknown data set. It's not really unknown. It's like, yes, so it's not really unknown, but we want the average performance, right? So we randomly take a randomly take a subset and we see the average performance out there. So it's kind of it's telling you that so it's Saying that it's kind of an since it's a, since this is a random out here, there's a layer of expectation that you can do to prove mathematically that it's actually the average performance you're estimating, like which you can directly estimate from there because of this random thing. Okay, because it, there's a uniform distribution attached there to randomly take take it out. No, log likelihood procedure is for the loss function understand this it's for fitting the past data test data set is a proxy for the normal distribution for this assumption test data set is a proxy for the uncertainty log likelihood is the training part or the past data so statistics is nothing but y given x is modeled by this distribution f with the expectation of y given x should be the fx and machine learning is nothing but this is bypassed and train and test data set is done the test data set is made by this and training is and the training is just simple like the loss function exactly the simple like the log, log likelihood here on the training set because in this case, in the statistics case, we use the whole data. There is no training test thing because we know we can generate if you want to do it in the test data set manner, we can generate it from the normal distribution again because we know the distribution, right? Or we know the expected value at least. So we not, do not do training and test in statistical model like linear models, regression model. We do not do that because of this reason that we know the distribution of that, okay? But in ML model, that is like decision tree, random forest, neural network. This we need train test thing, convolution neural network, all these things because there's no distribution assumption. That's why we need to do this train test differentiation to make sure you estimate the final thing very well, the unknown, the future unknown error very well. That's the whole goal. Okay. So Rajesh has a question. We should know the patterns relationship from the data to understand the internal parameters. That is why the training part. And here the data distribution is relatively unknown from the I didn't get you. Uh here the data distribution is relatively unknown. Uh which what you're talking about? Yes. The test is to evaluate the performance on you have to add this performance on new future data. 
this is very important. The future thing is very important. Performance on present data, not performance on future data. Okay. I mean, performance future data, but we have to make it sure because people get confused. And this is a confusing thing. I have tried my best to make it unravel the confusion and make it clear for you guys where every piece is fall, every piece falls. Okay. But yeah, did you understand, Arashi? Is your doubt clear? I mean, your statement is right. Any other doubts out here? Aditi, Anif, Chandan, Rajeshi, Sai, Saurav, Sriranjini, Chukanya, Tushar. Great. Okay. So this is the last final class out here on the free class on, on machine learning course. If you want to enroll and join the next you know next set of lectures, you can get in touch with me. You can see the lectures I have already, you know, the plan I have already shared with you guys and get in touch with me and all the best. Thank you for joining live classes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was something interesting. If you like the class, please share, please write boom in the comment box, not the comment box, but WhatsApp group. Can you write that please? Would you mind writing boom in the WhatsApp group? How you like the class? I will write it over there. Thank you guys. And I will see you. in the next class uh, if you join. Okay, so have a great day ahead. Good night. Yes, of course I will give. And in fact, the assignments will be this small, small assignments. Okay, these expressions out there which you have to estimate. Okay, that's the whole thing. I will give assignment from now on. Yeah. Yes, of course, you can get the recorded. I will upload it in my YouTube. And also, I will upload uh, in the course. If you know, okay, I will show you something. So, I will show you this is something I'm making for you guys. And this will be absolutely helpful for the future. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. See if you write course.srijitmukherjee.com. You will see that I'm building a course for you guys, all of you. And you can see all these things are like, it's not fully yet, but I have written the topics and I will upload each of these aspects of this course, each of this, but yeah, I mean, you can check out the uh course information out here to see what happens yeah uh, and get in touch with me if you have any doubts regarding the course before enrollment okay all the best guys and uh, i will see you in the next class who joins thank you this is a separate course but this will be the course uh, which will be or probably this course will emerge with this so we have i have not decided yet but yeah this is something gonna be very interesting and as you can understand, this is something that can help you in your machine learning understanding, which you will probably not learn from anywhere else. So thank you guys. Have a great night ahead. I will see you in the next class. Bye-bye.